Another big story today. Are there Americans really training with ISIS right now, planning attacks on the United States and its allies? President Obama had said last night during his big speech about his plan that it is a real concern. While we have not yet detected specific plotting against our homeland, ISIL leaders have threatened America and our allies. Our intelligence community believes that thousands of foreigners, including Europeans and some Americans, have joined them in Syria and Iraq. Trained and battle-hardened, these fighters could try to return to their home countries and carry out deadly attacks. It's a scary thought. Mark Lamont Hill is a political commentator and joins us now from New York. Mark, um, good morning to you. I mean, what a chilling thought to think that there could be Americans training overseas to be with ISIS. It's, it's certainly unbelievable as we sit here and mark 13 years anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. So um, does the president have a hard time this morning selling this plan to the American people? Or does it seem like people are definitely afraid of what ISIS could do? Well, I think people have been deathly afraid of ISIS for months now, particularly when those two uh, videos came out, one of uh, Foley and the other of Sutloff. And I think the president's remarks, president's strategy that was outlined last night is a lot more uh, amenable to what the American people want to see. I mean, you saw people on both sides of the aisle last night say that they agreed or at least appreciated the president's uh, uh, strategy. Even his biggest critics said the president has finally seen reality. Uh, and so the American people, I think, are going to be okay with this strategy. The question is, will this strategy work? Yeah, very good possibility. And if it doesn't work, then are we talking about mission creep? Because right now, it's not supposed to be any combat troops on the ground being involved right. in this. It's just trainers. Right. And, and that's the ideal here. That's the strategy here. The president doesn't want to intervene and become uh, fully entrenched in an Iraqi war. Again, he says that will not happen. He doesn't want us fully entrenched in a Syrian civil war, although it seems to me that by proxy we will be. Uh, this is the only way the president wants to go. There won't be U.S. Tro troops on the ground. But the question again is, can a severely weakened moderate force in Syria have enough power to, uh, after being beaten down by Assad regime and by uh, ISIS in Syria to really withstand this? W will Iraqi troops be able to be held up, supported, trained, and, and empowered enough and emboldened enough to defeat ISIS in Iraq? Those are two big questions, two big question marks. I think uh, Iraq is a much easier strategy than Syria, but neither of them is, is, is actually easy. Yeah, neither, that's for sure. Yeah. And I'm wondering how difficult this is for lawmakers because it strikes me that here we are, you know, um, in a timing where we could be talking about the next presidential election and this still be a big issue. And so people on both sides of the aisle may not know exactly what to say or how to position themselves here. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, the fact that, that Congress at all has to be engaged in this is something that no one in the Senate or the House wanted, right? I mean, if you're in Congress, you want this to be the president's call so that you can approve it or you can criticize it. But now you're on the record having to make a decision here about authorizing military force, about authoring the United States to receive funds from other countries for, for what they're going to do in Iraq and Syria. All, all this stuff is a big deal. Uh, lawmakers have tough decisions to make, but ultimately protecting the American people is the biggest priority. Definitely. Thank you so much, Mark Lamont Hill. Appreciate it. You know, to today,